Gamers on Games is sponsored in part by Hello, this is Doug Davis and I'm here with Fantasy Grounds to show you a little bit of the map handling capabilities that are built into Fantasy Grounds and all of our rule sets. So one of the first things you'll want to do in a lot of games is to share a map with the players and then to allow them to move their tokens around. So what I'm going to do right now is I've got um, generic basic rule set set up and then here there's an images and maps section and the icon might look a little bit different for different rule sets but it's pretty much uh, the same it should be in that same relative location as GM and then here when you open this section you can drag and drop images from another location so here I've got uh, something from the web let me pull this up so this is an example I did a, a Google image search basically across the site colon wizards.com and I just put in dungeon so here if I if I see this I see an image that I really want uh, so let's go ahead and look at this image in a full screen mode um, we actually want a, a better quality we want to click into it there we go uh, so we want to view the image so this is a nice clean image uh, we want to drill into it make sure it looks like uh, it's not just a thumbnail and then you can say save image as and I'm going to put it in my uh, pictures maps folder it can be anywhere really just save it somewhere where you won't forget save that um, I'm going to replace the one I used as an earlier example and then here you can just say show it in the folder Let me minimize my Google screen here and then just drag and drop that directly into Fantasy Grounds now that I've done that uh, I can click it and there it is it's all in Fantasy Grounds ready to use and you'll notice that it has a grid on the map you can use your mouse wheel to move in and out or you can hold your mouse wheel and kind of drag around if you hold control and then click and drag you can make the screen larger or smaller so that you know you can save some screen real estate I generally prefer to run with uh, multiple monitors and then I find that having uh, my fantasy ground stretch across two monitors makes it a little bit easier to manage but let's go ahead and link our fantasy grounds uh, grid with this grid so let's zoom in and I'm going to just look at any square and use that as an example I'm going to start somewhere in the middle of the map that way if it gets a little bit off it'll scale appropriately and, and not not be too bad so I'm going to start in the upper corner here I'm just going to drag down to the bottom and I think if I get right around 53 that lines up pretty close just right out of the out of the bat uh, there and what that is now allowing me to do is you can kind of see a little bit there's a, a grid off in this other area where there previously was not and now Fantasy Grounds has some extra intelligence so that if I do like an area of effect or a circle or a square, let's do a cone attack. If I start in the corner of a, of a square, you'll see that it says 5 foot, 10 foot, uh, there's 10 foot, 15 foot, 20, whatever. And as I rotate it around, you'll see that it's highlighting the different squares underneath there. So that's just one of the features that it'll do. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this. Now I'm just going to show you what it looks like to the players. So I've got a combat tracker open. This is with the Pathfinder rule set, but you know the D&D rule sets are all very similar and, and other games are similar as well. So you drag your characters into your combat tracker and then from there, with, once they have a token assigned, you can drag and drop them directly onto the map. And you'll see that it automatically scaled the token to fit into the grid now that it knows what size grid it is. So that's set in your preferences each rule set will have a little bit different preferences but here you'll see I've got token auto scale to grid set at 100% of grid. I like them to fill the grid entirely you could also set that to be 80% uh, or you can if you have an older rule set that maybe doesn't support that you can uh, manually set those by zooming in um, until the token fits then you lock the token scale and zoom in or out so the other things you can do is once I've zoomed in I can mouse wheel to kind of spin this person around I can also um, make him larger. So let's say for instance they cast an enlarged person on this character Landon. So here that I've selected Landon let's go into the combat tracker and say let's make him a 10 foot creature with a 10 foot reach and you'll see now that he his green area takes up more room. So he'll be in the center, he'll snap to the center and he's 10 by 10. Let's actually move over top of the token here and I can mouse wheel up and now his token is actually now larger as well and as I shrink or grow the map he'll stay in the same relative scale that he was previously uh, so that's uh, real quick that's kind of a um, short and sweet example of, of how to place your tokens and how to set your grid it's really that easy um, let me shrink him back down here 
and then uh, you can really lock down if you want your players to do their movement in a lot of game systems you can say okay I want to lock the tokens so by default the, the players can just move their tokens however they want much like they could around a table but in areas where you really want to make sure and see which path they followed you can lock the tokens and then what that'll do I'm going to show you real quick I'll switch to the player view uh, let me share it first I'll say share that with the players and it should now indicate down below that the players have, have now received the copy. If I switch over real quick, now the player can move when it's their turn. Uh, they'll be able to move over and say, I want to go up to here. They just click and drag it over. That's 10 foot. Then they're going to move up to there, the 15 foot mark, and then around to 25 foot, and then up five more. So now you can see very quickly that that took 30 feet of movement for this particular character. And then as the GM, let me switch back to the GM again the GM sees the path that they're wanting to take and I can right click and say yep accept that move and you can see they'll just follow along that little path very cool very easy to do uh, nothing very complicated but the other things really really cool stuff you can do as a GM is I'm going to show you real quick you can link different activities to these different locations and it's anything that you want to link so if it's directly a trap if it's a piece of treasure so for instance I could say there's an item maybe there's a warhammer that's just lying on the floor I can hold down control and I can drag it over to uh, this area here. And you'll see it put a little push pin. That's like a placeholder. Now I can hold down control and when they get to this part I can say okay well you guys have discovered a Warhammer and I can drag that to a character and then they can pick it up in a sense. Uh, what most people will do is they'll actually create a story entry and they'll come through and they'll say okay well this is uh, maybe it's room five here. So they'll say add a story. We'll call it room Five, and that is the uh, fountain room. Looks like a fountain. And you can say uh, this is what the fountain looks like. It bubbles up constantly. Whatever. Right? So you can set information here and then you can uh, make a chat frame for, for instance. Then you can say maybe there's an encounter. So if they uh, get in a fight with some trolls in that room then you can say let's go ahead and make this a link and let's make this I'll format it real quick here make that a heading now I just need an encounter with some trolls let me grab one of those real quick I'll grab the bestiary grab a troll and let's do an encounter and I'm gonna call this one fountain room room 5 fountain and I'm just gonna grab a couple trolls, throw them in there, and then we should be let's two trolls. I'll throw a token on there. I'm just kind of flying through this real quick just to give a, a quick example of, of a few things. Drag the trolls through. Alright, so now I've got everything set. I just need to link these with the map. I'll link that there. Close this down. And when they encounter these trolls, there's gonna be one there, and there's gonna be one there. It's kind of big, uh, kind of a small room for all these trolls, but you'll get the idea here real soon. All right, so again, when they enter this room and move the move the player back, the GM can always just kind of move people. So I will. I did not link my story to there, so let me drag that to there. Okay. So when they say that they're going into that room, you can stop them. Maybe they try to move up, and you say, okay, well let's just shift you back to here. I'll hold down Control and say Fountain Room. I'll click the little button and now it's shared that text with the players and now I'll say okay let's start my fight with some trolls I will click this button here and it'll add that encounter into the combat tracker again I'm using the Pathfinder rule set a lot of them are very similar especially the D&D ones here you'll see that they're now invisible to the players so it's automatically placed them on the map where they start uh, in this case they would see them but normally you might make them do a, a, a check to see if that's the case I can make one of them hidden maybe troll one is invisible and troll 2 is not invisible. So now if I show you the player view you'll see that uh, they only see troll 2. In this case the name is 2 so they might suspect that there's another troll somewhere around there. That can also be modified. You can change the name of them or you can hide the name of them until they've uh, seen them as well. Uh, but let's go ahead and show you real quick the um, let's make them both visible. I'm gonna go ahead and roll initiative here real quick just for everybody roll initiative. Uh, okay, so now I can start combat. Landon gets a chance to go first and then on Landon's turn, where is he? He's in the front. There's a few things he can do as a player now that you've got the grid and the map set. 
and uh, so what he can do is he'll have himself selected he can actually just kind of control click and say target and that says okay well this guy's 10 foot away uh, this guy's also he's now he's actually 15 feet away and if I was to uh, maybe move back here let's see if the GM lets me do that first um, then the GM can approve it he'll move back and you see that the range is now changed now you're at 25 foot and 30 foot so it makes it real easy for players to do the other thing it allows them to do is, is it links in with our combat automation functionality that, that you can turn on or off and then the GM and the player can can use that automation to, to do some really pretty cool stuff so they can in this case they can go down and grab an action and they can say okay well maybe I have an ability to shoot a longbow at both my targets so as I roll this you'll see it'll roll two targets obviously you you'll want to only use that if your character has an ability to do such a thing but in that case I fired an arrow once at troll one and once at troll two and then it told me okay you hit or you missed so that's kind of the functionality that's built in um, that that really helps speed up combat and then just the ability to do your area of effect so if you have some sort of a uh, you know an aura then you can drop that on the map and then as the different players move around see now this person has a different color aura so maybe he's got something else going on uh, here so now you can kind of uh, indicate to all the other connected players and to the GM exactly what's on the map what's going on and uh, you know kind of use that functionality the GM can uh, switch back to GM mode here GM can just remove all those pointers and then they can uh, hide the map so here for instance I can set a mask mode see this little icon here says mask I can put it in mask mode and it's all grayed out except for the parts that the players have explored so in this case let's just go ahead and say uh, here you'd want to map without the the actual secret door you would want to pre-edit that out more than likely so that they can't automatically see that but maybe they see this information up to about to there you can hold down shift and you can do um, you know different size things maybe they've actually explored some part of this area here but they've not really gone down that hall. So now as I do that, go back out of out of that mode, the player will only see that part of the map which has been explored so far. And that's pretty much it for maps. Um, super simple to use. We were all about um, trying to get the gameplay so that it's fast and easy to set up. You don't spend a whole lot of time you know, editing your map in advance. You can really use any image you want. Just, just uh, lay our grid over top. Um, there are some things you could do, more advanced things that you can do uh, once you're up and running just to make things super, super awesome. But the basics are, are there for you to, to get up and running within a few minutes. So I hope you enjoyed and check out our demo if you haven't already. And uh, look for more videos on Fantasy Grounds YouTube site. Thank you.